How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that has been over 24 years I have been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close colleagues say if you cut Andy in half it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool. I have now written 134 articles and recorded 30 hours of VMware vSphere videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Experts Exchange awards over the last 10 years working with the Experts Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame at Experts Exchange. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert programme since 2011 and more recently made a VMware vExpert Pro for the last three years. And welcome back to another Hancock's VMware Half Hour. Uh, and hopefully in this particular video, this is going to take us 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, I'm going to try not to go over 30 minutes to keep this one short and sweet. Um, you find me, as always, in front of an ESXi server. Uh, and today's ESXi server happens to be a HP ProLite Microserver Gen 8. Um, these fell off the Harbor compatibility list a few years ago. Um, they were certified up until 6.7, I believe, and I think they fell off um, after version 7. Uh, however, we have been running these in a lab, not in production, uh, using um, ESXi 7. We've recently updated these uh, to the latest and greatest um 7.03 build to 0036589 which is uh, 7.03 ug and the reason we've done this is because these servers are going to be the basis for um the newer videos that we're going to be doing in this series in a new series on vSphere 8 but before we get to vSphere 8 we have been um we have been suffering with some problems um, with the, the ILO card, um, the ILO 4 card on these particular servers, uh, where we were finding it difficult to mount the ISO to install ESXi 8. Uh, and I did actually resort to Twitter and uh, basically started getting a little bit impatient um, about it. And it only happened to be that one of the V experts sort of kind of turned around and, and came back to us. And that sort of kind of started the gray matter worrying and th sort of kind of thinking, you know, is there a later version of the firmware for ILO? And we just happened to be lucky because these servers are end of life. Uh, we don't have a support contract on them anymore. But occasionally you will find that if a vendor believes that there is a, a security issue uh, with a particular product, that they need to patch, um, then sometimes they will issue a security update. And it just so happens that a security update was issued for ILO 4 uh, in September of this year, September 2022. So I'm going to show you um, how uh, we can update that. So you find me in front of the DCUI. Uh, this is actually using ILO. Uh, and what I wanted to do is I just wanted to go to troubleshooting options. And I just wanted to check that ESXi is enabled in the shell and SSH is enabled in the shell as well, as you can see. Um, I've already pre-enabled it. I've not left it enabled. And with the amount of uh, malware that is currently around today, I certainly would not recommend malware ransomware. I would certainly not recommend leaving SSH enabled uh, on your ESXi servers uh, permanently. Just enable it when you need to do some troubleshooting. So I'm going to log in using WinSCP um, into this particular host server. Uh, and uh, if you don't know how to do this, uh, I will, in the description of this video, I will give you some um, other video links and article links that I've written. So we're just going to change to the temp directory on our host. and. I'm just going to go back. So the there will be a web link um, for all the HPE ProLiant microservers or ProLiants on the HP website. 
And here you can actually see that there's the online ROM flash component for VMware ESXi. It has a lovely little VMware symbol next to it, like a Linux symbol. Doesn't look much like a penguin. Uh, and a Windows symbol. So we no longer need to have to boot from a USB stick with, uh, with DOS or put Windows on it or put Linux on it. Uh, there is actually a ROM update that we can actually execute from within the, uh, the shell of ESXi. So I'm just going to click that link. And I've already downloaded these files. Uh, so the files are here. So I've already downloaded this file. I've already extracted this file. Um, and I already have checked um, the SH1 published signature that actually exists as well. Uh, I don't want to end up basically with a, um, with a, a broken um, server because I've gone and bricked it. Um, so we've already done that. So the next thing to do uh, is to transfer the firmware files so I'm just going to basically grab all those files and I'm just basically going to drag and drop them um, onto our ESXi002 host so the next thing I need to do um, is I'm going to run putty I'm going to log in. Again, if you don't know how to do this, uh, I will I will um, uh, show you. Um, I shall put some articles and that in the uh, in the description. So I'm going to change the temp directory. I'm going to use ls-al to list. So there's all our firmware files that we have uploaded. Um, So we need to change the permissions on the file so we can execute it. So we're going to use the, the Linux Unix command chomod, a chmod, plus x, uh, followed by the name of the file that we're going to execute, uh, which is uh, cp051871.vmexe64. And if we list the files again, you will notice now that it's changed to green so we can execute it. I'm going to use dot slash followed by case sensitive, remember, uh, VME64. Okay, so I've done everything in the installation instructions. Uh, just in summary, we've enabled SSH on the server. Uh, currently, it's in maintenance mode. I didn't show you that, but it's in maintenance mode, so it has no virtual machines on it. Um, so no virtual machines, it's in maintenance mode. Uh, I enabled SSH using the DCUI through um, ILO, uh, but you could be using uh, KVM over IP, um, or you could be actually at the physical physical server. Um, we're currently running ILO firmware version 2.73, and this is actually gonna upgrade it to 2.81. Uh, so I'm going to go back to our, um, so we've enabled SSH. Um, I've copied the files. I checked some of the files using the MD5 uh, checksum utility, um, extracted the zip file, copied the files to the host, to the temp directory, uh, used Chomod uh, so we can execute that file. And now I'm actually going to execute the firmware file itself. I'm going to hit enter. And hopefully um, this isn't going to brick uh, my HP ProLiant Gen 8. Now you may notice the video is maybe a little bit different in this video. Uh, I'm a little bit different up here. Uh, the background noise hopefully um, has gone uh, because it was time to switch from my trusty old Dell Alienware laptop uh, to something a little bit more beefier. Um, so I dug out an old gaming rig uh, that's not been used in a few years. And we've made some modifications to the gaming wheel. We've changed the graphics card to an RTX card. Um, okay, so it's, it's prompting and telling me um, new version is 2.81, current version is 2.73, the 
the software is installed, but it's not up to date. Do you want to update the new file? Uh, yes, please. Enter. Flash in progress. Do not interrupt, or your system may be unusable. Yes. Um, I'm always really very worried in doing firmware upgrades, uh, especially these devices are not on a UPS, um, and, um, you know, they can be easily bricked, um, uh, i.e. made unusable. Um, it's something that we don't often do uh, unless there is a requirement to do it. And in this particular case, obviously, there is a critical security vulnerability in the current version. Uh, and also, we're trying to see whether or not that this update cures the issue whereby we can mount the ISO and install correct install ESXi correctly. Um, so it's stating flash in progress. Anyway, so I was saying, hopefully the video is better, the audio is better, the background noise is gone uh, because we've moved this environment to, um, I was going to say a new shiny piece of hardware, but it's not actually a new shiny piece of hardware. It's a, a repurposed piece of hardware. Um, uh, that used to be a gaming rig, and uh, it's not been in use for many, many years. Uh, it did actually have Windows 7 and Windows 8 on it, so you can sort of kind of tell how old it is. Uh, so we've reformatted all that, and uh, we put Windows 10 on, and um, we've got an RTX card in there. Uh, we just had to move some USB devices over from the old Alienware laptop to this. So hopefully um, these recordings uh, that we're doing now will be a little bit more professional in no background noise. Uh, the green screen is being done via NVIDIA RTX broadcast. Um, so all is well. OK, so I've talked enough. And um, uh, looking at the time here, we're about 11 minutes in. And hopefully we can get this into 15 minutes. Uh, so at the moment, they're saying flash in progress. Do not interrupt or your system may become unusable. Um, so just to recap, um, we're doing this because the next videos that in the series that we're going to do in a new series that we're going to run in parallel with the old series is all going to be about ESXi 8, vSphere 8. So we're going to use these HPE ProLiant servers here in the lab. Uh, and we're going to do some videos on how we install and upgrade. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to do an upgrade video. We're going to do an install from scratch video. These are still running SD cards, micro SD cards. Uh, however, uh, they are using um, ultra flash media, which is industrial media. So the write cycles on them are supposedly better than normal SD micro cards. But um, I think the writing is on the wall about the use of removable media, SD cards, and USB flash drives for the installation of ESXi in production. Um, and I think you really need to consider now using NVMe, SATA DOM, uh, BOSS cards, M2, um, SSD, or even HDD if it comes to it, because we have seen issues with ESXi 7.0.3 where the ESXi OS becomes corrupted. Now, originally last year, um, VMware and the vendors, uh, Dell and HP, issued statements that SD media, USB flash media, was no longer supported. Um, that caused uh, a bit of concern across the industry um, and organizations out there that spent an awful lot of time removing SD cards from their installations. We had installations that were failing out there um, in end user land. Um, and then towards the end of the year, uh, then there seemed to be an about turn um, on that statement that, that they didn't quite say that it wasn't supported, but they sort of kind of made a recommendation that you shouldn't use it. Um, so I think you need to assess that risk within your organization. I know that it could be costly. Um, I know that it has been causing issues with some configurations of servers that don't have the ability to have NVMe or SATA DOM or BOSS cards. Um, and also, I think there have been genuine supply issues around all that as well. Um, so. I think you need to think about quite seriously if you are doing some upgrades um, from 6.7 to 7, or even if you're doing 7 to 8, and you've currently got SD cards or USB flash drives in your hosts, I think you need to basically have a little think about it. And of course, if you have to change the media uh, moving from um, SD to NVMe, 
then potentially you've not got an upgrade, you've got a reinstallation. Uh, but there are mechanisms whereby you can you, you can do an upgrade. Anyway, so I'm waffling on too much, and we're at 14 minutes already. Um, this is still flashing. So I'm going to put the video on pause, and we'll come back uh, when it's been completed. And just as I put the video on pause, I heard the fan spin up on the... the the micro server uh, you probably didn't hear them because the hopefully the sound is all being removed the background noise is all being removed magically by uh, uh, the RTX card in this particular workstation uh, but anyway the fans actually span up on the um, on the pro line and at that point I thought oh okay it's obviously doing a restart the ILO is doing a restart not the machine the ILO component is doing a restart and then it turned around and said the installation procedure completed successfully results of the SXI flash etc so i probably could just run uh for shits and giggles just run the in the firmware upgrade again and hopefully this time it's just going to prompt and turn around and say that new version is 2.81 obviously but it will turn around and recognize that the current version is 2.81 and i'm wondering whether or not the ilo has uh restarted okay so it has actually turned around and said that the firmware has changed uh so i've got to log in again Good sign uh, that we've it's not failed or bricked it um, and here we can see it says ILO firmware version 2.81 July 27th 2022 um, so excellent um, that's the result that we we wanted to see um, and it's actually recognized here as well uh, you know um, the current version is 2.81 uh, and we don't want to install a new version. So that's it. Uh, I'm looking at my counter and it's telling me that we're nine minutes and 46 seconds. So anyway, congratulations. You've successfully updated your firmware. Anyway, thanks very much for watching these videos. Uh, I enjoy doing them and uh, come back soon and uh, we'll start showing you ESXi 8 and how to do installs and how to do upgrades. Uh, and hopefully, um, ILO 4 upgrade on this particular Gen 8 has cured those issues, but I'll let you know. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.